Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the full release update. I had it in five parts. This is all combined and I've made a lot of additions to it. Going back through the originals, I started to realize that there were a lot of things that I could have added. And because I had time, I made those additions. A lot of the information is not critical. So if you've already watched five parts, you don't need to watch this one. This would probably be the longest video I've ever made. I've also rearranged a lot of the content in the video to be chronological. Keep enemies with enemies, buildings with buildings, consumables with consumables, all that sort of stuff. So the video should flow a lot better. As per my usual format, all the spoilers are at the end, but there'll be a spoiler warning before it. So let's get started. It's gonna cover the first couple of things that you'll see is that there's a new title screen, visuals and music. There's no option to switch between this one and the old one. Also, there's still a bug where if you alt tab out of the game and you go to start a new one, it will default and head to exit. You'll see the flashing. An easy way to fix this is just to open options and then go back to the main menu. It will fix it. And the next one is that you'll get an early access save detected warning when you open up a save. And it states that gold armor if phone will be removed from your inventory. The gold door in the hell cave progress has been reset. The ending of the game, if completed, has been reset. All note pickup items have been removed from your inventory. Some parts of the terrain have been altered, which may affect your base. Old structures may not have full functionality or access to new building features. And to experience the full story and new cutscenes, we recommend starting a new game. I've looked over the map quite a lot with my zipline towers and my base and that sort of stuff. There isn't a lot of changes to the terrain. But if you're on the other side of the map, as they call it, it's more likely that there's been changes. And same with the snow area. Not a lot has changed, but I think this is going to be like the first and only time this is going to happen. I would recommend starting a new save, as they do too, because they just haven't optimized it, I think. Now, I'm going to cover the most interesting thing that was highlighted in the trailer, which was that they've added dying tactical soldiers with red flares that can be seen from the distance to help direct players towards the location. They don't stand out very well. You have to get quite close for the flare to render. And every time you go up to them, they will die. It's the same thing. It's actually quite disappointing. But hopefully in the future, they'll make some changes that they might have some story, but they've got the exact same animation. As soon as you go up to them, they will die. I just highlight areas where there's goods and stuff, some story items, etc. They've often got a GPS locator on them too, so it makes it easier to find them with a GPS. You can't kill them either. They just die on their own. The next one is that they've added new findable tactical and worker dudes with GPS locators that appear nearby, helping direct players towards interesting locations. I've already covered the tactical ones, but the worker dudes is usually a cave with excavators and there'll be fences up a lot of the time and that sort of stuff. They're usually just filled with items like duct tape, rope, other stuff like that. The first one I've shown on here actually has a blueprint for the glider boosting platform thing that you can build. I don't know if any of these items respawn. It probably depends on your game settings. They can be marked on the map with a blue question mark or a little orange spanner, I think it is. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. And they're solidified in them as well. So it can be an easy way to get them without going into a proper cave. This is their way of filling out the map, I think. There's probably gonna be more to come. They won't stop at full release, most likely. They added new world details, more paths, partially dug tunnels by the excavators, new Joanna, Joanna camps. I don't know how to pronounce that word and fording new mini caves and cellars. You'll find these throughout the map, there's heaps of them. It pretty much just covers what I've just gone through. They've doubled up in the notes a bit, but yeah. The Ju, G, the Jian Yu camps are the Asian dude who I thought it was a woman. It turns out he's a man. As he gets on to the next part, that his helicopters will now take off and leave from bases around the map and occasionally hover over the player structures to check on them. He'll fly around you for a bit and then take off. I don't know if it's the soldiers or if it's him, I got no idea. Next is they've added campfire smoke plumes to villages that can be seen from a distance and will go out if there are no enemies there to tend to the fire. This might sound gimmicky and just more realistic, but it's actually quite useful if you're flying over with a glider, you could see potential base locations. Maybe you don't want to build near one of their camps, for example, but it's also realistic, I guess. I don't know if your fires do it. I went in and cleared one of their bases to see what actually happened if the fire and the smoke did go out and it didn't seem to work. So maybe there was one nearby I didn't kill, I've got no idea. Next is that they've added raccoons and they gave the ability for squirrels and raccoons to climb trees. Now raccoons don't drop a raccoon skin like they did in the forest, which was only used for one thing, it was the warm suit in the forest. I went and checked it. They're just another animal that's been added to the game to add immersion. Hopefully they add wolves or bears or some more hostile creatures. I did notice a cannibal chase and raccoon, so it looks like they do engage with each other. You only get one meat from it and a raccoon head if you do kill them. Next is that sea turtles now respawn at a rate of one per day, which is four times faster. This is very good. In my season two playthrough, I had a spot I went down to 
and they never respawned there. I don't know why. And I checked down there about 50 times. So hopefully it fixes that issue. And they also added 10 more sea turtle zones and some more additional zones around the map. It's probably best checking on the maps that people make on websites to figure out where they would be. There'll be more. The map's just too big. It needs more stuff. Next is that rainbows will now show up after it rains. I tested this out and it's not really accurate. They do appear sometimes, but they disappeared really quickly. I was using console commands to try and force it. That might have been an issue. I tried without, it just was hit and miss. I think this is good because it indicates the player when it stopped raining, if they're not focusing while they're playing without sound, for example. Though I just really like this one in general. I like rainbows. Speaking of which, when I was in Norway, on my first day there, after I got off the plane, I went hiking to try and stay awake to beat jet lag because at this point I'd been awake for like 30 hours and I managed to catch a rainbow on top of a rainbow perfectly lined up. I had never seen anything like it before. I thought it was really cool. I wanted to share that. Next is that they've added an extra snow sled to help direct players from the snow crash to the first ice cave. Now I started a game. I had to do this 12 times before the snow one would start. Very frustrating. But I played as if I was a normal player. I went around, helped Calvin, picked up the containers and had a quick look around to see if it was noticeable. It was there, but it didn't stand out too much. I went over to it and then I looked around and it's nothing very visible to walk up to there. Maybe if you're very curious, you would. I walked up there anyway. There's a lot of items up there. So if you're new to the game or if you've got the snow spawn, make sure you head up here because it's worth it. There is a can opener, which is decent. And there's a whole bunch of items, a little cave that you can go into. And there's some items in there as well. It even climbs down into a thing. Yeah, go there. Next is that lakes will now visibly freeze when the player is nearby. This only happens if it's switching over to winter. Now before, if you stayed in the same area, say you were building for days, if it was winter and you didn't leave the area, the lake snap wouldn't freeze, so you could keep getting water from them. Now that's not the case. It took a while for it to happen, but it did eventually freeze over to a point I could walk on it. I don't know how realistic that is. I thought it was cool. I don't think water would freeze that fast, but yeah, it's still a game. I did check if the opposite would happen, that if it was in summer or the winter ended, would it unfreeze in front of the player and it doesn't. This may come at a later time. If you want to unfreeze the water, you just save and reload. They added a flashing exclamation mark and a bright red light to discover all laptops. I think this is really important because those things could be easily missed and they're key to finding out where these locations are, like bunkers and such. If you miss them, you probably wouldn't even know you missed them and you'd have to go and backtrack and find them. They probably should even add an audio indicator as well, just in case people miss them. Like if you're running out of the room to escape enemies and you don't go back into the room or you forget, I don't know, just ideas. Now here's a few things that I found interesting. There is a 3D printer that is above ground. It's on here on the GPS. This is where the snow golf cart is as well. It's at one of the new camps. There's probably more than one of these, but it's good to know that there is one. Could be a convenient place to build near. I don't know that for sure though. There are some spots where solophyte spawns on the ground. I think I mentioned this in the first video, but I went and actually found some. Now this one I'm showing you first, it only shows a couple in the ground with some excavators, but there's a spot in the snow that has a ton of it. There's like 10 or 12 nodes and it's near a thermal pond. So this water doesn't freeze during winter, but it's always snowing up here. But this could be actually a really cool place to build. It's very flat near it where the solophyte is. Next is that the shark in the rebreather cave now finally appears. It may have appeared for some of you. I've heard in multiplayer it appears, but in single player, I was never able to get the thing to spawn. This is the first time I've seen it here. I don't know if it was a bug or not. I jumped in the water and went right up to it. It just looked at me. I think it bugged out. I don't know. I think there's limbs there. You're supposed to chuck to it so I can eat and then it gets distracted because apparently sharks in this game won't attack you if they've eaten. I don't know. They don't even do that much damage. Sharks in this game are piss ants compared to the ones in the forest. The forest ones will kill you in two hits. These take like 10. Kind of silly. They've renamed the glider to foldable glider and it can now be hotkeyed and stashed in the inventory. There's no default button. You've just got to sign a hotkey, say zero, for example. Now you do drop it if you hit the ground hard, I believe. I think that's what causes you to drop it, but you can just pick it up again. I don't know if any of you have seen a glider in real life, but they're ridiculously big. But you know, it's good that you can carry it. That's what made the forest one quite useless. You couldn't carry it. They adjusted hang glider downforce when pitched up to make it easy to gain altitude. Now this is actually semi-realistic. I think there's called like wind tunnels when you're gliding and they can boost you up. But I don't think you could just do it anywhere. But basically you could stay in the air forever. But that doesn't account for your other needs like food, water, sleep, etc. Golf carts and hang gliders now appear on the GPS when nearby. 
Just to show you an example of what it looks like, in the snow, it's actually quite hard to see. For example, the glider icon is white and on snow, it makes it a bit harder to see. And the golf cart is a little blue steering wheel. Moving on to golf carts, they now come equipped with radio decks and a GPS screen, which is a cool addition. Tony Macaroni actually made a mod that covered these things and added a few other things like a shelf to the back and log holders on top. I think the shelf on the back and the GPS is good, but the logs on top would probably make the golf cart fall over. But also that's where the solar panel was. Maybe N Knight took inspiration from this one as well. They've increased the headlight brightness on golf carts as well. During the day, it was very noticeable. At night, it was really dark still. I used an NVIDIA filter to get it a little bit more brighter. You could see a bit better. I don't know what it is with N Knight. They just really hate light and brightness, it seems. The game's just so dark overall, everywhere, especially caves in at nighttime. Eh, good thing we've got filters and stuff though. They added more golf carts to the golf course and around the map and made more connecting paths to drive them on. They added a snow remover to the snow golf cart plow. Just a golf cart with a snow plow on it. And when you're driving around, it does clear the snow. But about 20 seconds later, the snow just respawns. I guess it's just a realism thing. But it'll be a fine addition to someone's collection. Here's one change that is going to be very important for most players who play normal or who are coming back to the game. And that is containers don't refill on load. It's set to true by default in normal games. So you have to go to a custom game to switch this back on or off. Yeah. So all the containers in the world won't refill, which affects the game a lot. It makes it significantly more difficult. You have to plan where you're going to be going to get resources. You can't just keep raiding the same outdoor spot like the starting area. It's a good change. It does make the game more of a survival game like it's supposed to be, because otherwise you can just save and reload over and over again and just get stockpile of items. It's kind of silly. It was a problem with the forest, which made the forest quite easy. My advice to get adapted to this is find caves or bunkers because the stuff in there respawns and maybe have a zip line system going to them or just build near them you'll figure it out it's a good change but it might be hard to adapt or you can just switch it in the custom game mode next is that they've added a range and valid target readout to the rope gun this is very similar to the mod that tony macaroni made but it's pretty much identical it doesn't have the clicking sound change the further you get away it gets a higher pitch that was still something valid of Tony's. Though it looks good and it's useful. You don't have to mod it in now, but you can shoot at a range of 50 meters and it's got a range of 150 meters before the cable will disconnect. So keep an eye on the readout, it's very useful. And yes, it's the metric system, it's beautiful, isn't it? Next is a flashlight and shotgun no longer respawn upon loading if you already have them in your inventory. Now there's no solution for the flashlight, nor why does it matter, I don't know, because you can't store it. However, the shotgun is important, so I went and checked it to see how it works. So basically a way around it is that you can just make a weapon storage next to it and then put the shotgun on it, save, reload, and a shotgun will appear. And you can do this as many times as you want, but it's mainly so you can get a shotgun for yourself and one for Virginia. It will also work for multiplayer as well if you want to go down that route. Next is that the buckshot count has been reduced from 15 to 8 and the cone spread has been reduced from 25 to 20. It's narrowed the spread on it, which is gonna make it easier to hit things, but it's pretty much half the damage and they've half the damage of the shotgun before. So this thing really doesn't slap anymore like it used to. When it first came out, it was like comparable to the super shotgun from Doom 2 or the shotgun from Fear. I played both of those games quite a lot and they slapped. Now this one just doesn't anymore. Though it's not all doom and gloom for the shotgun because they've improved the slugs in the shotgun. Slug ammo will now cause the shotgun to hit react on enemies even if they're armored. So before it just took their armor off and didn't do anything. It was so bad, but now it actually does pretty good. You gotta aim with it though, because it's slugs, it's not spread. I've whinged about this a lot. I'm not very good with it. Next is if the bow doesn't have an arrow loaded, but the player has available arrows in his inventory, it will switch to those arrows. This might affect for like explosive arrows or fire arrows because the damage could be spread back to you. But it's better though, because you're in the middle of a fight, you don't really want to be fiddling around with arrows. Next is that the stone storage and sled now carry 28 stones instead of 27, and storage counters are now displayed. But I didn't find this mentioned anywhere in the patch notes. Unless this was from a previous patch, I'm not sure. But now there's a visual counter when you go up to it. The reason they increased it, I think, is because you can now carry four stones at a time. But we'll get to that. Next is that the taser stick, as they called it, but it's actually a stun baton, now only has three charges per battery. This is quite big because batteries 
before this update were quite rare and I don't know if they've solved the problem yet. Unless you have cases replenishing, it's actually quite hard to find batteries. There's only one spot I know I was able to get two guaranteed every time, and that was near the entrance of the entertainment bunker where the 3D printer is, it's on a shelf there. But I found no other viable spots for batteries. So batteries in this game are rare, unless they've fixed it, I don't know. It would be much more useful a multiplayer if one player can stun and the other one wax them with like an ax or a katana, etc. That's where it would be very viable. This game is more catered to multiplayer than single player if you didn't notice. Next is explosions will now cause break damage to all armor pieces hit. I don't know what this meant. I started to think that you take like two or three bombs and then all your armor would disappear. No, I can't figure this one out. So it removed three pieces of bone armor every time I got hit, regardless if it was in front of me or if I was standing on it. So I don't know what this actually means. Why would it remove three pieces at a time if all armor pieces are getting hit? I can't make sense of this one. Maybe you just don't blow yourself up. The next is if a player sleeps in an unprotected location, they can now sometimes be interrupted by an enemy search party. I don't know what the chance of this happen is, but I'm gonna guess it's about 50% because I tested it once, I woke up, nothing. Second time, I woke up with two fingers near me. Now this is finally a reason for a player to build a base. It used to happen in the game if there were already enemies nearby, but now it's a random encounter thing. Now I ran a test with just a normal house that I built and slept multiple times and no enemy search parties interrupted me. I did it about 10 times. However, on one night, I got my sleep interrupted. So I thought maybe a house isn't safe. I look outside and there's three raccoons. I think this is a good sense of humor and not to put this in. I don't know what caused this to happen. I just did it over and over again. If you are in a fully enclosed house and I mean fully enclosed, not one log missing, you should be right. You can cut doors and windows, they're fine. Also talking about sleep is that after the player sleeps, Calvin will be found also sleeping somewhere nearby. This didn't seem to be true. I slept in these tents and there's multiple tents here. There's two of them. You'd think he'd be sleeping there, but he wasn't. With the tests I did prior with the enemy waking up, even with beds nearby, Calvin didn't spawn close to me. He was still pretty far away, unless it only counts for extremely long distances away. Here's some stuff about the GPS. The GPS screen now more accurately reflects the world, showing cliffs, sparse, and clearings. This is true. This is the full map, the new one extracted from the game. They reworked the look of bunker icons in the GPS to be more distinct. So it's like a TV screen and I don't know what the M is, but yeah. They made the cave icons smaller on the GPS. They'll still look quite big. I don't know why that is. Because when they're so big, it's hard to see where they are specifically. The GPS tracker will now remain at the zoomed out level when re-equipping it. If I zoom in and opening up that, it re-equips it. I'm zoomed in if i go zoom out and open up the inventory there you go they added an area light to the screen of the gps tracker to give it some glow i don't really know what this means because yeah looking at it here just looks like a phone i guess the next one is one of the best that they've added in this game i wish the forest had it too but the rebreather mouthpiece is now moved off screen when leaving the water so it automatically equips and unequips so you don't have to go into the inventory and remove it it's so good it still takes up a lot of the screen but it's still cool next is that they've added a ui to show the player current strength level and the player's max strength level has been increased from 50 to 100. This can be seen down the bottom right. Now strength originally only increased your health. Now they've made additions to it. Each level in strength also increases your melee and chop damage by 1%, which means it could be 100% more by the end of it. And I did testing on some pillars and stuff with two strength because I couldn't lower it to zero and with 100 strength as well as with an upgraded axe. Now upgraded fire axe by the end of it did 105 damage. Even with buffs from the stew, it didn't increase the damage anymore. It still would increase your tree cutting damage, but 105 damage per hit will kill most cannibals if they don't have armor. This is a massive change, a very good one, because what ended up happening was that melee weapons just became redundant towards the end of the game. And this happened in the forest too, because you could just use headshots for everything. I mean, you still can, but this gives viability to melee again. Using bows and stuff is fine, but it gets repetitive as a means of killing them. I could imagine at 100% with a tree cutting buff, you probably take trees down in one or two hits. So you don't even need a chainsaw. I'm just guessing that though. Next is that they've added a new sickness system tied to drinking unclean water or eating bad food. Drinking clean water or eating meds will cure the sickness. From what I can tell, it just drops your health by about 25%, which is a pretty big chunk, especially if you've got no armor. Decent realism survival mechanic that's been added and you'll get a you are sick thing sitting in the bottom left. 
I also found out that if you eat poisonous berries such as twin berries or snow berries, it will add a sick effect to you. I also tried to shoot myself with a poison arrow. This is incredibly difficult to do, but you can't shoot yourself with a poison arrow. Even with speedy run, it just ignores the player. But I'm assuming that if a player gets hit by another player, it might cause it. It did in the original game. Now we're moving into the consumables. I've compiled these together because a lot of them work off each other. They've added a loading screen hint for drying racks placed by fire drying things faster. Now, I didn't even know this was a thing, so I went and tested it using a drying rack right next to a fire and a drying rack about two foundations away. Maybe it was too close, I don't know. But after testing it, I found out that they both dried out at the same time. So maybe the fires got a warming effect of the house, I don't know, but I didn't have any walls on it. So it was confusing, but they both dried at the same time, which was about a day or something, 24 game hours. I wasn't happy with these results, so I went and tested it again multiple times. I did a test for the drying rack under a shelter and one that wasn't right next to it and they both took 24 in-game hours. Then I'm at another fireplace one next to a drying rack. It was overlapping, it was that close, and that still took 24 game hours. And then I tried it with fire torches as well, and that's still the same thing as 24 game hours. So I don't know what this means about you can use a fire to speed up the drying process. 24 game hours is fine. You shouldn't really need it to go faster. You just gotta stay on top of it. But why is drying meat important? Is because rotten items can no longer be used in cooking. Dried perishables will no longer go rotten and cooked foods now take twice as long to go rot versus raw. So basically what that means is you can no longer cook with rotten items, which is what I used to always do. But if you dry the items, they'll no longer go rotten because they used to. So now the incentive for drying meat is a lot higher because you can add them to the cooking pot. As for cooked foods now taking twice as long to rot versus raw, I think it just means cooking them on the fire and putting them in your inventory. I suppose that is something you can do. I don't know if you can cook dried items and make them go to a cooked item. This was done in the forest to prevent you getting the debuff from eating dried meat, which was it lowered your hydration by quite a bit, especially on hard survival. Things to test. Things to test indeed. I went and did test it. You can cook dried meat, but you have to wait until it's on the fire for about 30 seconds and it will convert from dried meat to cooked meat. So when you eat it, you don't get the hydration debuff. Once it's cooked, you can't re-add it to the drying rack. If you're making stews, it doesn't matter if you're using cooked meat or dried meat. The dried meat penalty goes away once it's in a stew. Next thing is that cat food and oysters can now rot and they added textures for them and new rotten textures for the meat and fish. They're no longer green like they used to be. Green was a very easy indicator, but probably not an accurate indicator. I think mold is more like white and it reflects in the textures that they've added here. Cat food going off is not a big deal because you can just leave it in a can. However, oysters going off is going to be quite tricky because Kelvin's special is quite useful, which requires three fish and one oyster. And if your oysters are going off, well, then you're kind of screwed because you can't refrigerate them and you can't store them anywhere that's going to keep them fresh. There's no refrigeration in the game. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I went and found close-up images of the rotten meats and rotten fish to show that the textures have changed. These were the original ones on the left, so they may look different now, but I'm not sure. Note that there's one on the right. That's what cat food used to look like, so they changed it for this update. Colors might be off though, I'm not sure. Next is that eating berries while in the inventory is much faster. It is very fast. It's probably like twice the speed, maybe three times. I don't know if it's the same when you're not in the inventory. It's not a viable way to get food, but it is a way to get food. Before it was so slow that it was ridiculous. In real life, you could eat it much quicker. You can also hold down the button to keep eating berries in the inventory as well. That's so very fast. They've increased the raw fullness of some of the perishables. Now, now fish appears to be decreased. Meat and fish both give the same amount of fullness in their raw form. It appears cat food also gives more. I'm not sure though. This is on normal, I think. Oysters also give the same amount as meat and fish, but they used to give like barely anything. So oysters have had a massive boost. They're actually a lot more useful now, but they do spoil, so keep that in mind. Next is that you can now add twin berries and snow berries to shelves. There's been a lot of changes to the way shelves work. You can even add multiple items at a time. So in the case of berries and flowers and stuff, it will add five at a time. So it's much faster. Next is that they've added seed items for twin berries and snow berries, which can now be grown planters as well as mushrooms. Twin berries and snow berries don't have much use unless you're making poison arrows, I believe. But still, you might want to make them. But growing mushrooms is a bit strange because I put mushrooms in there, I waited three days and I only got one back. So basically you plant one and you get one back. I don't think the return works correctly, unless there's something I'm missing. In the forest, they used to just spread. You'd plant one in a big garden bed in a cave and they'd spread and grow more. It was kind of cool. Maybe you need to put them on the shelter in this game. I don't know, I didn't mention anything about it in the 
Update notes. Mushrooms are good for the mushroom recipe because mushrooms don't go off and the cream of mushroom recipe only takes one of each mushroom and it can give you 100% fullness if you drink the whole thing. Very good. I wasn't happy with my test results with mushrooms, so I went back and tested it again to see if I messed up something or maybe I needed to leave it longer. And it wasn't the case. You plant one mushroom, you get one mushroom back. So it's completely redundant to plant mushrooms. Unless I'm doing something wrong again, which I'm highly doubting it. Next is that they've added a new jam recipe. It relies on the icons rather than actually telling you what is actually gonna go in there, but luckily you can just put a whole bunch in there. And even if you add it extra, it's gonna still just make the recipe and not use what you added extra. So I think it used blueberries, salmon berries, and blackberries. But it's a cool little recipe and it looks kind of cool. Next is that the energy bar fullness has now increased from 15 to 30. This is huge. This is doubling the amount it gave because before it was really annoying to eat them. <laughs> I guess with the changes to containers no longer respawning by default, it's gonna be harder to come across these things. They've updated eggnog recipe to use four eggs. I can't remember how many eggs it used, but I think you can only carry four at a time now. Eggs are extremely rare to find because you have to find them from when turtles lay their eggs. They have increased the amount of turtles that there are in the game, so it might be easy to get those eggs, but you still have to go down to the beach to get them. I'm thinking that they start making duck nests and then have ducks have eggs. That's what I'm thinking. Or maybe having birds nests where they come and leave feathers, they can sometimes leave an egg. That could be a cool thing. But otherwise, eggs are just too rare to make a difference with this recipe. Also, the recipe kind of looks like piss. Next is inventory related stuff. They optimize all colliders and improve textures in the inventory to speed up how long it takes for items to appear in the inventory once opened. I'm actually using a mod that increases the speed it opens up. I'll show you it quickly. Instant inventory open. So while it's instant, there's not that rolling out feature. It is a lot quicker. It's probably a full second. It used to be at least two seconds. I'm using this mod because I'm extremely impatient. I like my animations as short as possible. Cloth in the inventory can now stack to five. This might sound silly, but this is really good for me making leaf armor because you just don't know how much was there it should stack to 10 that's what they should do because usually you'll make 10 pieces of stealth armor or leaf armor or whatever it's called otherwise it looked like this and you didn't know how many you put on there so you just went for randomly click and non-stop on here but it actually limits it to five at a time why not do 10 oh i'm not so cool on it anymore and this is a big one items can now be batched add and remove from the inventory by holding down the button so where's a big one bones just right click and hold it down so this was in the forest and it took them over a year to add it i don't know why i'm just glad we got it so you don't have to ruin your mouse trying to add things to the inventory thing they improve the interaction and animation of throwing items from the grab bag to shelves and such. So basically, see this thing just doesn't really move around. It was realistic that it moved, but it made it so hard to select things here. So now it's more rigid and easier to use. So sacrifice of realism. Yeah, but a button can now be held down to use it. So just holding down click and it's automatically adding it. Much better, man. Next is that they enabled count readouts on all the items on shelves that are not one-to-one -one visuals. I don't quite understand what it meant by not one-to-one -one visuals. There's an easier way to put stuff on shelves, much easier. So watches can now stack in the inventory too. I think it was just one that would appear. Oh, the count builds up as you're holding it down too. See, the number gets bigger the longer you hold it down. That's cool. They really went out with this update, didn't they? You can now carry 20 solophyte. But add all items, is 20 in there now. Probably doesn't display 20, but who cares? Used to be 15, I believe. Often in the update notes, they won't say increase from 15 to 20. All items now have hover animations. Every single one, they say, which is cool, immersive. Yep. Imagine if Windows 11 did that. Next is that some item counts have been reduced to match their visuals in the inventory and to encourage using storage more. This is a huge nerf. So I'm just looking at here. I'm just gonna give it a quick overlook and see what I notice. Used to be able to carry 10 circuit boards, I think. Three bombs still a standard. Used to be able to carry 10 C4 bricks. Molotov's the same, flares are the same. Vodka bottles are the same, I think. Grenades are a big one. Used to be able to carry 10 of them. So being able to carry five is quite a big one, especially with containers no longer resetting. Ammo's still unlimited. Okay, so by the looks of it, there is a few culprits, but the main one that's gonna hurt is definitely the grenades. There's three items that was strangely affected by this, but it's the brain bites, the bacon bites, and the steak bites. You used to be able to carry like 10, I think. Now you can only carry one of each. I'm starting to wonder why it's an item in the game because they barely give any fullness. I don't know what this is about. So that's all the inventory stuff. The next is that there will be no printer resin by default in printers. Instead, you have to find it and add it. Before there was usually like 200, maybe 300 in a printer, and you could use that whenever you found one. Now they've all got zero. And what was interesting about this update is that there was so many things added, but there was no 3D printer recipes added. I don't know if they've just run out of ideas or not, but I thought they'd be adding more 
to it. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. Though something else is that I did check printer resin on the shelf. It now adds 50 at a time. Before it was one and you can carry a thousand of these things. So you can now add it to shelves. I don't know if that was fixed in the last update. I don't remember. Next is that zip lines will now have a visual harness when attaching stones or logs to the zip line. And I'm assuming planks as well. I didn't think to check that. But you just see a rope around it. So it's no longer just floating. It's just a realism thing. You don't have to tie it on that. It's automatic every time you attach it. Next is that they've added a cooking pot stand for when a pot is placed on a fire to avoid it visually floating. And this is a cool change. It's a cool little stand. Looks better, makes the fire seem better. But yeah. Now this is an unmentioned change I had in one of the videos, which was about uncontrollable sliding. And it seems to have been fixed because it's not repeatable anymore. I tried three times and I couldn't get myself to lose control while sliding. So it looks like they've done something to fix this, which is really good. Maybe it was just a bug that they didn't intend to add, but you still can't climb mountains anymore, which is unfortunate. Bring back the climbing pickaxe, I say, and make it possible. It was in the game files. I reckon it'll be an excellent addition. You don't have to climb cliffs. You could always climb steep mountains with it. Now we're Moving on to building stuff, starting with the bonfire. They've added an option to extend the campfire with logs to turn it into a bonfire. This is slightly confusing because to do it, you need to have a stick fire with quarter logs cut up onto it. Then you can add the logs. It doesn't matter if it's got the fire pits around with the stones or the rocks. It takes quite a few logs and I'm guessing it extends the length of the burn time. I don't know if it attracts enemies or not. Once you do this, so you cannot add anything to it except for leaves. So you can't cook on it, which is fairly obvious. That's not really what a bonfire is for. Now in the original update video, I said that I should have tested the brightness of it. So I went and did that. And it is actually quite bright. It actually looks quite cool in the nighttime. Though I thought I'd also test its burn length. And here is something that I found to be quite disappointing. And that is it didn't even last 24 hours. I think this might be a bug that they might need to work on because it burnt out so fast. And I don't even know why. They've added a new explosive storage structure. This allows you to store explosives. I think you still can store them on the shelf, but I think this is more of a dedicated structure. Maybe to make them easier to access, or maybe universal storage isn't so great. You can hold molotovs, bombs, and grenades. You used to be able to hold 10 grenades. Now you can only carry five. Keep that in mind. Next is that they've added an arrow storage structure. This stores all the arrow types, 10 of each, I think. It's quite tedious to put them on as you can only do one at a time. And it's hard to select the arrow because it's so thin. Getting your mouse cursor to hang over it might be a little bit difficult. I think things like this might actually be better if you had a controller. I don't know how this affects arrows that I've upgraded with, you know, stun or fire or explosive, etc. Now they've added two new platform prefab structures and the ability to snap them to build structures. Now this is very good. It helps bridge the building between the forest and Sons of the Forest. It's probably the closest thing to the forest we've got. I'm not sure if it'll be classed as procedural building, but it's good enough. Now you can build a small platform and a medium sized platform. Now you can't link them together when they're in a blueprint form. They have to be built first. Calvin can help build these and they can still be pulled apart. But once they're done, you can use other platforms and other structures to attach to them. Well, most structures anyway. And they can even be affected by elevation, so you can move them up and down, etc. Now, if you're placing them by themselves and you go up a certain amount of distance or automatically attach a rope, that's fine. If you don't want it, you just take it off. Keep in mind, the higher you go, the more expensive it's going to be. And the max height you can have these things is five, but you can stack them on top of each other. Though, how are you going to get up there to put more on? I'm not sure. Probably a rope bridge. Now, most people probably think this is just another structure. It's not. You can actually make it do things that you normally couldn't, like placing platforms on the edge of a cliff. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do this very well. You'd have to do some major stuffing around to get it to work. And the good thing about it being a blueprint is that you don't need to reach the faraway places. As long as you can reach the closest point, you can place the log on it. So it's probably the least realistic building thing they've added in this game. But that's probably why it's so good, because their focus on realism can be a real pain. Here's another very good perk about it is that it's gonna make it very easy to build on water. Now, normally you can build on lakes and ponds during winter, and I still recommend you do that if you want to build on the lakes or ponds, mainly because you won't use as many logs. The foundation will only go as far as the ice, and when the ice melts, it will extend all the way down. So you get free logs, basically. Though if you want to adjust the heights that you can work at, then you can do it this way. It's gonna be much easier to build like this. And one of the best things about it is that you can now make sea bases, though you will have to build quite far out. And it would be quite expensive. It's around 12 to 13 logs for each piece. And just to show you, I'm fair way out of the sea and I'm placing logs on it and it's building just fine. It's just getting the logs out here that's gonna be the annoying part. Though Calvin could help with that probably. You're probably better off using zip lines than a log holder. 
just so you know, if you're doing this kind of stuff and you make an accident like this, you are in for a bad time. Because I had instant book build, I couldn't remove what was underneath. So yeah, I probably could actually if I swam down, I didn't think of that. Next is that they've added a new auto foundation system for prefab structures such as a small cabin, the lean-to, the lookout tower, and the platforms that I just mentioned. This is another thing that helps bridge the game between the forest and Sons of the Forest, because you could do this with the cabins and stuff, the procedural building. I'm really glad they're bringing it back, because not only is it really useful, it gives a lot more freedom to build, a lot more ways to build, and you can get Kelvin to build these things. And it helps with the planning process of building. You're not stuck doing one thing at a time, one log at a time. You can plan bases much better now. Now, something I found that wasn't that great about it is that it was hard to adjust the height of the foundations when attached into them. Or platforms, I forget what they're called. It was hard to attach the platforms to some of these prefabs. There's no real height adjustment system for them. So for example, the Ling 2, it was better to attach the Ling 2 to a platform rather than the other way around. This doesn't use excess logs either. The game recognizes what's there. It's a very cool system. You can even build platforms off tree houses and stuff. Speaking of tree structures, there's something I would like to see, and that is to attach tree structures to the top of these platforms. Like this one in particular, tree platform two, has the pieces that stick out. They're a real pain to make. You have to build all the way up on one side just to put them on, and then you tear it all down again. It would be so cool to be able to attach this to normal buildings, not just trees. Same with the other tree houses. Not sure how they'll do it, but I'd like to see it. Next is that they've added four new findable blueprint structures, including a glider launcher and three mystery structures. Now, because the mystery structures are spoiler territory, I'm going to leave them for the end of the video in the spoiler section and just cover the glider launcher. Can be found in this cave here, if you can see on the map. It's just inside. It's not a big cave. There's no enemies down there. And once you build it, it's like a platform with a ramp and four turtle shells that are mixed together. And you can actually take it off the platform. I don't know why it comes with the platform actually, the setup like this, but it launches you very far into the air and I wouldn't recommend using it unless you've got a glider on you. If you do have a glider on you and you don't have it equipped, if it's not hotkeyed, you can't use it while you're in the middle of the air. So what I would do is set it for zero. So if you get launched in the air, you just press zero and you'll activate the glider. And also if you do toggle your glider to a hotkey, if you fall off a cliff or jump off one, you can hit the glider key and you should survive. I tested the glider launcher on enemies to see if it launched them up really high. It just works like a normal spring trap. It'll still kill them, but it won't work on anything big like mutants and stuff like that or the big fellas. Use it to get up on cliffs and such, or you can use it to get up on top of really tall buildings. Something I noticed is that it won't attach to the new platform structures, which is unfortunate, but the platform structures will attach to it. I'm sure this will be fixed in future patches. Now I tested how high it can actually go, and what I figured out is that it will always go at least 15 high. 15 cubes high or 15 sections high. I don't even know what to call it. But occasionally it will launch you much higher, and I don't know what causes that to happen. It's not a big deal, I don't think, as long as you don't fall all the way down, I suppose. I think if you fell from that distance, it might kill you. Next is that they've added a new nice chair and nice couch buildable structures. They're just called chair and couch. They should put the word nice in front of them. Now these are utility structures and decorative. If you sit on them, your energy will go up slowly, but I can't stress how slow that is, but it's still free energy. But they look better than the standard stuff and they look much better than the gore couches and the gore chair. And just to show you, here's the nice chair versus a bone chair and normal chair. Next is that they've added a new trap. It's an explosive trip wire. Now this is basically just a wire and a grenade and it's a single use trap. Your companions, Calvin and Virginia won't trigger this trap, though you can and so can enemies. It's basically just an instant grenade hit and it wasn't very pleasant trying to test it out. If you have these two close to your structures, it will blow them up. This might be something worth building in a cave, maybe. If you got enemies down the end of a tunnel, you could pull them in or lure them in. That would be cool. Now, you cannot trigger it by any means other than walking over it or an enemy walking over it. Maybe an animal, I don't know. But I tried shooting it with a shotgun, that didn't work. Bow and arrow did not work either. Throwing stones and throwing a molotov, none of it triggered it, but standing on it did. Pretty average trap, though some people might get a use out of it. It does the exact same damage as a grenade. Yeah. Next, I'm going to cover is two new traps as well. The molotov tripwire and the leaf trap, or is it leaf pile trap? And you can use them in conjunction with each other. It will help the burn length last a bit longer. The Molotov will trigger the leaf pile trap to burn and then the enemies will burn on top. I have to censor it because YouTube. Now I was excited to see the leaf pile trap because I thought we could start writing things again and you set it on fire. I tried using a flare. It didn't set it on fire. I thought it would, but a Molotov did. It didn't turn out as good as I thought it would. I think you need to make the letters really, really big for it to work properly or to work nice. 
I went back through my one I made of the forest and honestly, the forest one just looked a lot better. They were long, thin lines, so they were easy to make letters with. These are like little circles, so you have to make more and it's actually quite laggy on the game. Completely redundant. You don't need to do this. Oh, I think it's cool to write things with fire. Don't you? I had this weird glitching thing. You can see all these squares in the textures. I don't know what that was about, but my game wasn't running very well. Now I tested the leaf pole trap inside a cave against the puffies and it just went bad. They were just running right through it and not even catching on fire. A couple of them did, but 80% of the time they went through it, they did not get caught on fire. I don't know what's going on with this, but honestly, these three new traps are pretty disappointing. Next, I'm gonna cover some of the changes made to stones and stone structures. Now first, the player can now carry up to four stones at once and can now place multiple stones at once, as many as currently held. Since most beams and stuff are four, it will instantly place four if you're holding that amount. So no longer placing one at a time. It's very cool, this one. They reworked the stone wall so that the upper rows require only four stones instead of five. This is gonna save a lot on building. I always found this one to be strange, the inconsistencies and such. Stone beams and floors now use a more subtle place animation. I was trying to find out what this means by just, well, placing it. And it seemed a lot smoother and a little bit more consistent and a little bit more accurate. I don't know how to describe it. It probably plays into the next thing, which is placing stone beam on the ground now displays more accurately where the stone will be placed. I did find this to be true. It seemed to be more consistent and less random. Also placing a new stone floor will now orient it to the place in front of where the player is aiming instead of the default calculated position, which might be outside the viewport. Now, what I think this means is that often you'll go to place a stone on a stone floor and it would place somewhere behind you or something. I never understood what that meant. They also added a new stone toss animation when adding stones to structures. Now, unfortunately, I have to give a minor spoiler here, but here's one of the new structures. I thought to use this one because it had a lot of stones in it. When I could have just used the fireplace now that I think about it. That was very stupid of me. Just seems more smoother, less rigid. It just flows with the stones, especially when using stone hack. Next one is that the setup combined LOD system and added a fourth LOD to optimize rendering cost of stone floors. What this basically means is that there's another level of detail which is going to help the game run with bigger bases. Especially with stones, they're probably quite cost heavy on the system. It basically means is that your game's gonna run better when you've got stone structures or stone floors as it says. <sighs> Next is that they've lowered the CPU cost of having lots of idle structures. What I believe this is referring to is that your game was loading structures that could have been on the other side of the map, even if you couldn't see them. The CPU was still rendering them. That's now turned off. So basically the game's gonna run a lot better. You'll probably find that this game, Sons of the Forest, runs better than the forest now. You'll probably get a higher FPS on this one. They've still got a lot to do. I think storage structures haven't been optimized. So if you have a lot of logs and stones and things stored, if your base is lagging, it's probably because of that, but they'll get to it. Next is that the powered cross and leg lamp now have a fixed snap point for the wire. This should make it easier to attach wire to it. Also, I mentioned ages ago when the leg lamp came out that it was kind of stupid. Junkman sent me a message saying that the leg lamp was probably a reference to a, a movie called A Christmas Story, which had a leg lamp in it, because it did come out right before Christmas. It just went right over my head. And as you can tell, they still produce massive amounts of light because Ed Knight loves light in this game. Next is that the fly swatter and bone maker traps can now be moved after placed. This is really good. Not a big fan of the bone maker one because you have to replace the Molotov in it. But the fly swatter one is really good. It's a very handy trap. You do have to recalibrate it, well, reset it after you've moved it. That is a good thing because otherwise you could just literally drop it on enemies and just kill them with traps without even really doing anything. I did have an issue with the fly swatter trap, the first one here. It didn't want to be moved. I couldn't place it anywhere. So it was broken, I had to throw it. Just make a new one. Next one placed all right though. Next is that they've added a sound effect for when relocating structures. Makes like a dzzz noise. I don't know how to spell that. But also blueprint structures that are being relocated will now retain their previous facing direction. So they'll be still facing the same way. Very useful. There should be an option to switch that around though, because they still left blueprints on the player axis instead of the world axis without giving you an option to change. Next is furniture supported by other furniture is now linked, preventing the dismantling of the supporting one. The supported furniture is also destroyed. Basically what this means is that you can no longer make floating stuff with this. If you got a torch or something that's attached to a shelf and I destroy the shelf, both will go. Next is that grounded beans fake pillars now remove snow around them. Here's an example of what it does. If there's no fake pillar, it won't remove the snow. It's to prevent snow coming up through the floor, glitching through. It's kind of like grass culling, but for snow. 
Next is when a structure is dismantled, it can now spawn in bundles of items. Storage will also drop what was stored if it is destroyed. So sticks, for example, come out in bundles of 10. If I destroy a stick holder that's filled with sticks, it will drop three bundles of sticks. Also known as... No! Now other structures like stones don't come with bundles. It's hard to tell what is coming in a bundle and what isn't. I think it's mainly just sticks from what I can tell. Logs certainly don't, they just explode. Log cuts when they blow up will create a lot of stick bundles. You don't get any of the items back from the log cart itself or the log sled. I've learned that from driving over those gas things in camps with a log sled or blow up the log sled. It's really annoying. And shells, an example, no bundling of items. It's a good addition though. This is a weird one. I thought I would test it and mention it. Log plank and variants now throw the same orientation as logs. I tested this out and it doesn't seem to do as it says. I don't know what's going on with it. I thought it would make it easier and cleaner to make piles of logs if you're dismantling structures, like pulling up planks. Maybe it does, I'm not sure. Next is another strange one. Structure dismantling is now X instead of C to prevent clashing with adding items to storage. But this isn't the case. You still press C. I think this might have been worded wrong. Maybe it's structure dismantling is now C instead of X to prevent clashing with adding items to storage. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm trying to think about that and process it in my head. It's not going too well. I'm going to move on. Next is that they set the structure distortion at 70% of structure's max HP and partial collapse at 20%. What this means is that the building will warp and change shape once it reaches 70%, so it gives you a good indication that structure is damaged. But once it gets to 20%, a piece of it will probably fall off and you'll need to repair it first before you place that piece back on. So it's a good visual indicator. It's useful to know this information. Solar panels can no longer be placed in occluded areas, which is basically underground. Fair enough, they're not going to work down there, but it means you're not going to be able to create power down there because you need to place a solar panel, then place the battery, then hook up the light bulb, for example, but not that useful anyway. Power is very limited in this game. doesn't have much use. Next is a bit of a bad one, but stick spikes and electric fences are now more fragile. Starting with stick spikes, they can damage eight times before they'll break. And as for electric fences, they can damage six times before they break. Now, when the electric fence breaks, the wire just falls off. Keep in mind that if you have one wire attached to the whole fence and one of these gets broken, it will break the whole chain. Electric fences are not very good. You're better off attaching each fence to a solar panel. I don't know why they nerfed these because they didn't feel too good to begin with. It seems like more boring maintenance to fix them up and that of the base i don't know a bit disappointing they were just never that good to begin with maybe it's to push players to use other traps yeah next i couldn't understand but placing walls under leaning beams on ground is now possible if they are level i don't know what the hell this meant so i decided to make a little staircase that uses the side wall if you didn't know you could do that you can the required items on the user interface for structures is now hidden when the player is in caves or in bunkers so if you place a blueprint and you go inside a cave they will disappear i think this is excellent it's a very good quality of life thing because you don't need to see that crap while you're in a cave. I do certainly miss building caves though. That was a cool feature of the forest. Now, next I'm gonna cover stuff to do with the player and the way they obtain warmth and such. Now, the first thing I've noticed, and this has probably been in the game for a while, but the altitude that you are at as a player affects the temperature. The higher you go up the mountain, the colder it gets. The lower you go, the warmer it gets. Here's some of the changes they made. They adjusted the rates at which player's skin temperature changes and the rate at which the player gets wet and dries off. The player will now get soaked from snow much slower than in rain. Indoor temperature is now clamped within a range so that indoor temperature is not always the same as outside. Fire sources are now hotter so the player will dry off faster. And they adjusted the amount of rest that a player gets indoors and outdoors and how comfort modifies it. So this is a big survival thing overhaul. As you'll see in the footage here, I've got player stats toggled here, which shows all the temperature stuff and some other things. The bit that's covered up by my timeline bar is the race that the player is which is default white. I don't know what other races there are, but you can see the temperature fluctuating. Now, what is interesting to pass on from this, and this isn't really part of the update video, but I don't know what footage to put in here for a lot of this stuff, is that a house won't keep you warm until it is completely sealed down to the last log. Every point has to be sealed. It doesn't matter if you've cut windows in each point or if you have a doorway without a door on it. Those things don't affect the temperature. It will still be warm inside. So you don't need to put window sills and all that sort of stuff, but you can if you want. Now the fire torches, they do warm you up, but you have to be standing right next to them. I tested a fire and the range that thing had that kept the house warm was only like one block. I don't understand why. 
It didn't even heat the whole house. If I stand at the end of this two block house, I won't be warmed by the fire. You can see the temperature fluctuating. Really bizarre how it works. I tried different clothes as well. They do affect your temperature also. I tried building a bigger house and to see if it was just bugged out and I tried making a fire. It didn't make a difference. The house didn't warm up. Though you are a lot warmer inside a completely sealed house. You can have as many holes in it as you want, as long as every position is being filled by a log. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm gonna cover enemies in the game. They've added two new mutants, the Legzy and the Holy. They aren't that unique. The Legzy will jump at you and so will the Holy. The Holy can also charge at you, the Legzy can't. The Legzy has 500 HP and the Holy has 600 HP. For reference, the Armsy has 400 HP and the Creepy Virginia has 320 HP. Now there really isn't a lot to say about these mutants because they're very similar to other ones. If you kill them, both of them drop two pieces of mutant armor and that's it. I'm not sure what day these ones spawn on. There's not much to say about these. I actually went on a rant and I'm re-recording it because I thought, why are they adding things for the sake of adding things? But they look cool, I guess. So yeah, they've added a new stronger puffy variant. It's called a spotty. I don't know what this is about. It does knock you down, which is really annoying. It's like the blue variant, but it just has lots of spots. It has 200 health. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about them. They added a higher tier gold armor level for cannibals. You'll see them around occasionally. I guess their armor's stronger. Heavy enemies can now wear armor and winter clothes. Also, their running now drains more energy. So as you can see from all these ones here, they're wearing different variations of armor. It's dependent on what day you're on. I've set this one to over day 100. So they're gonna spawn with the new gold armor and such. They will only spawn with winter clothing if it is winter. I changed the season to winter and the ones I'm adding come with the winter clothing. As for the draining energy, that will probably create a weakness for them. They might bend over and take a breath or something. They won't be able to fight nonstop. Glowing puffies now have a more unique looking materials. I don't know what this is either. They don't glow as much as they used to, I think. I'll find one and put it up here, I don't know. Fat cannibal health has increased from 140 to 170. I don't know if that refers to fat females as well. Otherwise, it's just the red ones. I don't have any footage for these ones, so I'm just gonna have footage of the new mutants here. Cannibal head damage multiplier from sharp melee reduced from two to 1.5. I think that's if you hit him in the head, gonna do less damage now. 50% more instead of 100% more. Demon attack increased damage by 25% and increased co-op game health up to 30%. Demons already hit quite hard and fast, but they're actually quite easy to kill with the cross. But it's interesting to see that co-op game health has increased. Is it based on players? Regular male cannibals run and walk 20% faster and are 5% larger on average. Strange addition. Doesn't mention they attack faster, so yeah. Creepy plating attack changed from one to two waves. Each wave slightly smaller. It will now include the new creepy mutant types. So once you take out one wave, another wave will come. So it's not all at once. I think this is a better way of doing it. Puffy attacks have increased speed. I don't know how much they've increased it by. doesn't say. Puffies can hit pretty hard. They do a lot of swinging. If you get caught up in it, you could lose a lot of armor. But these next ones, I'm going to cover multiplayer stuff. And I've got my nephew to help me with it. And the first one's a big one. The player downtime before respawning has been greatly reduced. They also sped up the scale animation to give more of a sense of urgency. Now, other players, from what I can tell, can't tell if you're down unless they actually see you bending down. Once you get taken down, you've got 30 seconds to be revived or you respawn at a camp. The good thing is, is that it's not like the forest where your stats restart. So if you've got 100 strength, you will keep 100 strength. I tested it myself what happens when you go down and you do have the skull animation, but it's not for other players. So unless you're on a microphone or message other players to tell them you're down, if they don't see you, they won't know. But yes, I timed it and you've got 30 seconds. They they added proximity, Mid-ity. proximity, or is it proximity? Is that proximity? I've never seen it spelled. Okay. Voice chat with filters for in caves and underwater, along with adding additional filtering to the walkie talkie. It's to add immersion stuff. So you're in cave, you're probably going to get an echo, I believe. Or if you're underwater, probably go. Other players' names are now hidden when riding the golf cart. That's good because it's unnecessary. Players' name tag will now be hidden when crouching in multiplayer games. This is the same in the forest. I just re added it. They added a pause menu icon over players in multiplayer appears as a cog over their name that's to show that they're maybe afk or they're in their inventory so they might need protection that's a good one to add they added a pvp damage setting and made it available in the multiplayer admin menu like the forest it's probably going to give the proper values 
in the forest, you could damage other players, but the amount of damage you did was very minimal until it was added. And if it's anything like the forest, fire is going to be the way to kill players. Now I'm just going to cover some console command things and options and settings and such. Next is that they've improved the debug free camera system, which now uses the main camera. So assets around it will load properly and it works with the gamepad. This is so if you're trying to get cinematic footage or a good screenshot of your base, yeah, etc. Before, it was absolutely terrible, so it works a lot better now. Basically, what happened was when you went away from your character, all the textures and stuff were really bad quality. They hadn't loaded in properly because the game detected that you weren't near it to improve performance. This is technically the only way to fly-ish. You're not really flying, though. It's just a camera. If you want to fly, you've got to use Red Loader, Tony Macaroni's mod. It's got X Free Cam, which allows you to fly around the map. I don't know why a night won't add flying. Next is a bit strange, I put it in here just because I thought it was interesting, but they removed the ducking of music in the settings menu. I think it's because the main menu music is no longer quite intense. It's more like relaxed than that. But the ducking helped you concentrate if you're looking through the options. It wasn't as loud. It made you like concentrate better. I think it did. I just thought it was interesting. Next is that they've added options in the custom settings for search parties, frequency and building resistance. There's also the creative mode options in there, but I haven't covered that yet. I'm gonna cover it later on as it's a bit spoilerish, but I'm assuming this will change the difficulty of the game. At this point with their custom mode settings, I'm starting to think that players would be better off selecting a custom game mode rather than using the default ones. Next is that they've added terrain anisotropic graphics setting. I don't know what this is. The fact that it's got terrain in front of it means it's probably going to affect the terrain. I've got some footage that I just repeat over and over again here. It's showing it with off and on high, but it affects surfaces that are parallel to the camera. So yeah, cool. The next change is that they've added AMD Super Resolution 3, which is FSR 3. Now, I don't know much about this one as well because I've got an NVIDIA card. I can just use DLSS, though I have heard very good things about FSR 3. I was surprised in the last update that they only added FSR 2. Now they've added the 3, which apparently is a lot better. You've got ultra performance, performance balanced and quality. Ultra performance on FSR 3 is pretty bad but it looks a lot better than FSR 2 on ultra performance. I couldn't tell the difference between balanced on FSR 3 and DLSS. This is a huge addition because if you don't own a 30 or 40 series Nvidia card, you cannot use DLSS, which is stupid and greedy of Nvidia. Even if you've got a 10 series card, you can't use it. It's dumb, probably even 20 series, but AMD to the rescue, you can use this on any card, AMD or Nvidia. So your 1080 Ti's, your 2060's, etc. you're all good to go. Now I'm gonna move on to stuff that I wasn't able to get footage for, and I'm gonna read it out as the rest of the patch notes that I'm not gonna cover is scrolling through, and there's four pages of them, so there's a lot. And after I've finished covering the rest of the patch notes, I'm gonna cover the spoiler stuff. They've moved many items and pickups to better locations. This is actually a huge change, but God knows what it actually means because it's not specific. Next is that they fixed some objects in the world being dynamic that should be static. This will improve performance quite a bit. They added a new weather oculation system for buildings to provide much more accurate weather visuals and rework the interior space warmth system to be more accurate. Now the last one's a little bit eh, but you know. They added additional achievements. I don't know what they are. They added a new system to ensure multiplayer clients see completed ghost structures transition smoothly to the built version regardless of networking conditions. I don't think a knight will mind me saying this, but getting building working in multiplayer is extremely difficult for them. They spend a lot of time trying to make it work properly. They optimize construction database to reduce the amount of CPU usage and lower amount of data to send over network and multiplayer games. Sounds technical, but it's going to improve the game quite a lot. There's the more stuff that has to load in the game, the slower the connection is going to be. They've balanced enemy structure damage and fixed some creepies, demons, and large female cannibals being unable to damage structures. They tweaked all enemy armor values and increased the chance of spawning head armor and body armor pieces on enemies. I don't know what the tweaked armor values means. Now, I got footage for this one, but I decided not to because it's the babies and I just can't deal with YouTube right now. It says that babies are now single hit from any weapon in normal mode, which isn't true. They've got 10 health, so you need to do at least 10 damage if you throw a rocket him and only does four damage so in the forest you could throw a rocket him and kill him and this you can't just do that you've got to throw three rocks the slingshot would probably kill him and bow and arrows and stuff they're very annoying in this game they were much better in the forest they hit like trucks in the forest but they were glass cannons easy to kill 
Fire arrows and torches will now ignite bodies when arrow impacts or the torch performs a downward thrust attack. This is so you can burn bodies in that. If you do this and you walk away, they won't burn. You'll have to reignite them, I think. Gold armor is now being renamed to ancient armor. I think this is probably good because it isn't really gold. It's like solophite. Gold is not a very strong metal. It's pretty though. Calvin can now walk over logs, also fixes pushing them under or through the terrain. That's a problem for him. And it's also a problem with um, cannibals. They will do that too. They'll push your logs under the ground. AI can now navigate around player built furniture and small structures and they've added ai pathing to rope bridges so that means calvin virginia will be able to use them and so will the enemies i don't know about this pathing thing and air tanks now drain 25 percent faster in reality air tanks can hold like i think an hour i'm guessing of air in this game it's only about three minutes doesn't make sense, but it's for realism balancing purposes. Otherwise, they might as well just remove air tanks. They should just do it because in the forest, it was the same. There's so many. Honestly, you don't spend that much time underwater. There's nothing in the ocean. They've made it too murky and hard to see. It's just an unnecessary extra feature. Anyway, now we're going to be moving on to spoilers. So here's your warning. The spoilers are going to start off minor and progressively get more and more. Now I'm going to start with the least spoilerish thing, and that is creative mode, which allows free building and without animations and such. Now the default creative mode has no enemies in the world. If you go to custom and you scroll down to the bottom, you can activate creative mode here. By default, it's got all the stuff on. So group placement, no cutting spawn, instant tree chopping, god mode, etc. Group placement is the new feature that you cannot currently get with mods, which says they place everything you all have in hands at once. So I'm guessing that was a bit of a typo. Place everything you have in your hands at once. So the R is unnecessary. I recommend doing it this way because then you can go through and fix up the things you want. For example, if you go normal creative, you're not gonna get enemies. Whereas here, I can. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that you start somewhere else and it skips the whole intro sequence. Now, I originally thought that when you play creative mode, you started in the same spot because the two times I opened up creative mode, I started in the same spot. I thought that was the case. However, I learned that every time you start, it's actually a random spot you can start. It just changes. If you look in the build, you ideally want to spawn as close to the golf course as much as possible. You also start with Kelvin and Virginia near you and they're both at 100% affinity, I think, or 100 affinity, which means they like you. Virginia won't run away. Calvin does everything you ask him to do anyway, so. And you start with a partially filled inventory. These are things that you're gonna use in building. So like batteries, solar panels, ropes, bones, sticks, and that sort of stuff. You do start with the new artifact, which is very spoilish, I guess, and I'll get to that. It's also got a new mode, a toggle mode, and you press X and you see these giant <laughs> items. These are your logs and your stones. So if you get them, you got them like that. I'll turn cloud shadow enable off because that's just too dark. See, that's how much shadow the clouds create, if you're wondering. So you press X to switch between them and they don't run out. So it's got no animations like that mod that I've recently shown on my channel. And the group placement thing is like that. That's part of it. And then if you want to, you can place like that. Instant placement of all your things that you've got. The blueprints now have instant build mode. So it won't build instantly, but it'll build like this. So just like the forest. And there you go. I think that's a better way of doing it rather than using instant book build. So a foundation, I'm gonna place that. And then you can place other foundations off it. If you hold down shift, be able to place multiple ones. Yeah, so the problem with instant book build is that if you make a mistake, you have to pull it all apart and it can take time. Well, it's better to hold down E. Instant book build, if you're wondering, is a console command. If you type in cheat stick into the game, press F1, you can type these in. If I then place this like that, it'll be instant. You get things like this, and I don't know why that can't be placed. There's no reason from what I can see as to why that can't be placed. And if you pull apart a structure, it doesn't fly everywhere like it normally would. So your pieces won't be going everywhere which is a cool feature. Probably the best thing about creative mode is actually building with stones because it places whole lines like this. And the floor, <laughs> that is so much better than the way it was. Stone building's been really improved. And if you want to place it, just right click, it changes direction at which the floor is going to be placed. And also building with thing, you got this. Now it's strange that they put the group placement in the starting options. I don't think it can be changed here. Let's have a look. Gameplay. Skip building animations, creative only. Never. Oh, mm. wow, they actually added it. 
That's very impressive. I thought it was just limited to creative mode. I decided to go and test this in a normal game to see if you can build without animations and you can. So you no longer need the mod for this to happen. You just got to beat the game first. I think it's okay. It is a reward. If you're more serious about the game and you want to build more, then you do want to turn animations off because it does get very repetitive. I did address it in a video I did a little while back talking about how it's cool after the first 10 times and 100 times, but after it starts getting to a thousand and ten thousand that's when it's a problem so if you wanted to place two instead of four you're probably just going to do this and just place it one at a time then like that if that's what you want to do and that's fine because you can just go around and pick them up and they'll disappear i think i'm very impressed with how they've handled creative mode initially i had no idea how they were going to be able to pull it off but they have it will be very fun in multiplayer with building i think also the requirements are gone i can't see them down the bottom left of how many resources i need yeah, Calvin can build these too. He's not here, so I don't know if he'd instantly build them like we can. Another thing it allows to, which is really cool, is that it opens up all the blueprints. So every blueprint is now accessible here. Because normally it's quite a pain to go find these. The game doesn't want to hand them out to you. Now next I'm going to cover the three new mystery structures, which is this one, this one, and this one. God, the darkness and difference between standing in the light, eh? it's quite a lot. Now this first one here, if you don't know, is a teleporter. And it's linked to this new item here, which is the artifact. You've been collecting pieces for it probably a while. If you're new to the game, then get ready for a lot of going around the map and collecting it. It uses Solified as ammo. So you activate this teleporter. If I go anywhere on the map and change the mode, click, it will teleport me to that. I don't know how this is going to work in multiplayer if there can be only one active teleporter or if multiple people can have teleporters. I don't know. This is definitely a good way of getting around the map being absolutely ginormous. And it suits the world law too. I think it fits in the game. So this has been executed very well. I'm very impressed by this. This can be placed on structures by the looks of it. And only one can be active at a time. So you can't just put these everywhere on the map and go teleporting everywhere. This will be excellent if you don't like caves because then you can just get out whenever you want. So if I activate this one, it deactivates this one. I activate this one, deactivates that one. And the next two mystery structures are attract and repel. I don't know what the specific name is for them, but I believe they do opposite things. They like using skulls, so get collecting the skulls. Now, this one doesn't take solophyte. So I think this is attract. And this one costs Solophyte, probably to keep them away, but let's have a look. Let's test this out. Yep, here they are. So it does attract them. And this is day one, and they're Frank's bottle. Look at that, the super aggressive one. Good thing I had God Mode on, otherwise I'd be dead. So I think doing this will spawn Solophyte in your inventory as a reward for killing them. And also the reward is the things that you can do with their bodies. To turn that off, we activate this one. Add character. And it looks like they're running away. I'm going to test if it work on mutants. Let's see if it does. I've got no idea. Why is it spawning in two? Nope. They don't care. <laughs> don't take them down. Maybe it's meant to work. I don't know. But by the looks of it, it costs Solophyte. I don't know if it gets used up. I think realistically it should. They can't live in a passive thing forever. I don't know what happens if you activate both at the same time. And the last feature this thing can do that I know of, because I don't think it can kill enemies like it can in the end sequence, but you can solophyte an eyes structures. So this is probably an answer to like what I wanted in my request video before the game came out was to add reinforcement like iron. So now it's this instead. So toggle structure resistance debug on. It's a bit of a long term. So this floor with the solophyte has 3,600 health. Without the Solophyte, it has 1,800 health. It doubles the amount of resistance something has. Now, as far as I know, everything can be upgraded. I guess it's a term we probably should use. I think it uses one Solophyte per upgrade. Okay, so I upgraded the couch and the water's only changed. The disc and still the same. So it'll just double the health of everything. So it might be worth doing it for defenses or anything, but it does give the game some longevity. You'll be able to upgrade your entire base if you want. Yeah, so it works on traps as well. It looks kind of cool, to be honest. I don't know if it will affect performance because it is a more of a reflective material. 
I've got no idea. As far as I know, this cannot be used to kill them. Yeah, as you can see, it's used one sulfide in the time I've been chatting away. Now, forgetting all the artifact pieces, I can't show you exactly where to find them. They're all underground in caves and not very easy to access. It will take a long time to get. However, if you do have Red Loader, you can use a console command. It's a custom one made by Tony Macaroni and it's go to pick up and then you type in space, artifact piece, and then you go A through to G. That is a cheating way of getting it. But some of these pieces are in really annoying places like cave D, for example. Now this go to pick up will work for every single piece except for part f and the reason part f won't work is that you actually need to finish the game and select the ending that allows you to continue playing and then this cave will unlock and you climb down and get the last piece then you can make the artifact complete so as you can imagine the utility of this artifact very much encourages players to go and complete the game to be able to unlock it now for all the mystery structure blueprints the ones that i've already shown you they're all located in above ground caves so you don't have to go crawling underneath through mazes and caves to find these are quite easy to find and every one i'm showing here has a gps marker of where they're located now as mentioned with red loader you can use the go to pick up console command for this one names are blueprint teleporter blueprint repel and blueprint attract so these ones are quite easy to find you've just got to make the trip to go get them and they're definitely worth it especially the teleporter that's the main one speaking of the teleporter it's actually in a cave below a campsite one of those jinju camps or whatever it is now in one of these tents is a night vision goggles i did not know this and it's very useful to know this now another thing that was added in the full release that i didn't really cover is all the new story items and pickups and stuff but there's so many, it would take me ages to go through and find them all, and it would just spoil it. Now I'm gonna start moving into the story stuff. I'm gonna start with this new video sting that is in the food bunker. It's actually at the boss fight section. I'll let it play here and you can watch it if you want. Just realizing now that this has no sound at all. So I thought I was gonna let it play and not speak at all, but here we are. The rest of the video is quite disjointed and such. I didn't know how to edit it, and I've been sitting on it for days trying to figure out how to work it out. So after this one, I'm gonna play all the voice clips. I went through the whole game again. I did it all normally so I didn't skip any voice lines. There's a lot, so I'm gonna start and name where each one is so it makes sense. Now I should mention this is for people who have already beaten the game and just wanna see the new stuff because this is what I'm mainly gonna show. I'm cataloging the changes. This isn't a story analysis or to show you what the story is doing. So if you've never played the game, this is gonna be really confusing for you. Now the first one is when you just start the game. There's no changes to the starting sequence except for this. Next is when you go into the food bunker. When Asian man goes to run away, he says a line. Look good, Mr. Now this is the first time you meet Timmy and this is in the entertainment bunker and he has his new voice lines. It's not safe here, you're running out of time. It's gonna happen again, you have to leave. Now this is the scene when you find Timmy and Eric. They added some dialogue to Mr. Noodles. Little Milton Tim, all grown up. The next time you run into Timmy is when he's trying to get into the golden door. There's gotta be a way to open this, a key, something. Now this is a change, the armor no longer works on its own. No, no, we're, we're missing something. There is a blueprint right next to the door. Now this is called armor plating. The other one's called item plating. You need to use solophyte and put the armor in here and upgrade the armor. The waves of enemies that it attracts are a lot worse than the item plating. So be prepared for this one. You're gonna be defending like hell. Unless you build it on an island, of course. And then once that's done, you go back and put your arm on the thing. There's gotta be a way to open this, a key, something. Stay close. This is the player into me running through the hell cave. He has a few lines he says along the way. I'm just gonna cut everything but them. What is this place? They're not like the others. So many bodies. This looks old. They just keep coming. What happened? Oh god. 
and then you gotta fight the demon boss. Timmy doesn't really help you kill this thing, so you're gonna have to do it on your own still. And then you've got the end part. They made a change that Virginia and Kelvin are now wearing the clothes that you have them in. They don't just show up in their default clothing. Kelvin will always show up, Virginia won't unless your affinity's high enough with her. And that affects the ending you get too. Once you kill him, you can progress. It's time. No, 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 no. This was supposed to fix me. It's making me worse. And this is where you fight the second boss. There's a couple of lines of dialogue in there, but that ending massively changes. What did you see? What did you see? What was in the pupa? What was in the Now the cinematic that plays when you start to leave is really gory, so I'm gonna have to cut it. I'm gonna upload it in a separate video with both endings attached to it. Basically, the artifact activates and kills all the mutants and such. And then Timmy tells you that it's trying to get you to stay, and he wants you to leave. So it's a lot better this ending. Don't go near it. It wants you to stay. Don't listen to it. But after this, it plays the end cinematic. I need you to help me. It's getting worse. Look at me. Look at what I'm turning into. I need your help. I've told you I can't help you. And what about with this? Where did you get this?
Now this next part is only available if you've reached max affinity with Virginia, I believe. Once that ends the credits play, and during the credits there are 10 images in total that show you what the aftermath is of this game. And it's definitely setting up for a sequel or an expansion. This is the ending if you choose to stay. Don't go near it. Don't, it's drawing you back in. Don't touch it. It wants you to stay, don't listen to it. It's gonna leave without you. Don't, don't! You're on your own. Now, if you do end up staying, Timmy and Eric piss off and you've now got the artifact and now you can continue playing the game. You go up to that beam of light and that's the new cave that's opened up to get the last part of the artifact. Now, you're going to climb down here and get all the way to the bottom to find the artifact. And once you've got it, you can now craft it and do all the things that I showed you earlier that you can do. No matter which ending you pick, I think you do get creative mode. I do think you should make a tent after killing the demon boss and save there. There probably should be a save point there to encourage players to save, but there isn't. And they made some changes to the end credits. There's a lot more names in the special thanks. I did promise I would give my verdict on this update and I was extremely impressed by it. When the forest went full release, it was mainly just bug fixes and there wasn't actually a lot of content that was added. And the content that was added was pretty average, but they've really knocked it out of the park with this one. I'm recording this after their small update that they added and they're going to be adding a lot more content to the game I believe. They did mention a long time ago that they were going to do expansions for the game. I can understand that. A company can't live off making free content forever. Makes me wonder how 7 Days to Die has gotten by considering they've released one game in 10 years and no expansions. So the update has exceeded my expectations. There were a few things I found odd. There was no additions to the electrical system with solar panels and batteries and no new 3D printer stuff which I thought was odd. These two systems are quite limited and I feel like they have the most potential and they still even fix the water and winter problem as well i wonder how they'll do that but a lot of my problems of the forest videos a lot of the issues from them were fixed in here so it's been pretty good i still miss procedural building from the forest though the building's getting better but i still miss it terribly it was so much better but oh well We'll see how far they can take it with this one. So yeah, that's it. That is all the update notes. Hopefully you found this video useful and long. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.